want to say thanks to God who is truly the head of my life. I want to say thanks to Pastor McVicker for this opportunity to stand before you, my Christian, my Christ the King family. I have to say that, you may be seated, I have to say that this celebration of Women in Ministry Month is important and memorable to me because it was during a women's in ministry event that I first encountered the women of Christ the King. The warm and welcoming spirit led me to visit, which led me to visit again, which led me to visit again, and which led me to become a member. So I want to say to anyone here that is visiting and you've been here several times and you find yourself making your way to this place on Sunday morning, perhaps the Lord has already positioned you in the place where you belong and it's just your time that you can come down and give your hand to the preacher and say yes to the Lord and accept membership here at Christ the King. I'm so glad and I'm humbled that God saw fit to plant me here and allow me to grow under the leadership and the example of Pastor McVicker. And I'm thankful to be part of this family. There is a word from the Lord. Let us stand now together as we read from the scripture. I didn't want y'all to be standing while I was talking. Let's go to Luke chapter one. I'll be reading from the New King James Version verses 34 through 38. Luke chapter one, verses 34 through verse 38. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, 
the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. It is from this text I have entitled this message, She Said Yes. She Said Yes. As I look at the theme for this year's Women's Month, the question is asked, are we our sister's keeper? I would submit to you that the answer is yes, and add that being our sister's keeper is a commitment to care about another sister's well-being, to look after another sister, and that requires accountability not only to our sister, but first of all, it requires accountability to God. In order to be our sister's keeper, we must first be submitted to God. We must allow God to do his work in our lives and through our lives before we can be our sister's keeper. We must first say yes to God before we can say yes to serving God's people. When we say yes, we make better sisters and friends. When we say yes, we make better wives and better mothers. When we say yes, we're better employees, we're better employers. When we say yes, we're better neighbors when we've said yes to God. When we said yes to God, we can encourage and build up one another rather than tear down and discourage one another. That is, when we've said yes to God. When we've said yes to God, we'll help a sister out if we see her struggling versus talking behind her back and proclaiming that perhaps she ought to know better than that. When we've said yes, we work better together on the women's fellowship event, hello somebody, or the women's day service when we've said yes to God. Yes is a word of faith. Yes is a word of trust. Yes is a word of consent. Yes will cost you your convenience, and yes will cost you your comfort. We, sent, we tend to say no to those things that make us uncomfortable or that require something of us or cause us to step outside of our comfort zones. It's easier to say no, but I'm here to tell you today, my sisters and my brothers, that God wants our yes. Today's selected text highlights a great example of saying yes to God that we can certainly take note of. This is a familiar passage, one that we often hear around Christmas time as the story of Jesus' conception and birth is told. As background, in the verses preceding the selected text, the birth of John the Baptist is foretold by the angel Gabriel. The Old Testament predicted that God would send a messenger like Elijah to his people just before the Messiah appeared. And that's found in Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. Gabriel appeared to a priest named Zechariah and announced that he would have a son named John who would fulfill this prophecy. His wife Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was also Mary's cousin. The Bible refers to this couple as well stricken in years in verse 7, which emphasizes the fact that they were up in age. And they also had no children because Elizabeth was barren. So upon hearing the words of the angel, Zechariah expressed his disbelief. And as a result, he was made mute or unable to speak until the fulfillment of the promise. 
How many know that it's better to keep your mouth closed than to speak negative or disbelief when God says he's going to do something? It was at the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to Nazareth to a virgin named Mary, who was espoused, which is similar to what we know as engagement, and in Jewish law is as binding as marriage. The girl would remain with her parents for about a year before going to live with her husband and consummating the marriage. The angel announced to Mary that she would have a child who would be the Messiah and also the son of the Most High. And that brings us to our text for today. And I see in verse 34, upon hearing this declaration, Mary seeks clarification. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? Mary was asking for clarification as she did not understand how this would happen, because naturally she was a virgin. It's worth noting here also that there will be times in our lives when God has given us a promise and we don't quite know how he's going to do it or we don't understand how it's going to come to pass. But I'm here to tell you that if God said he will do it, he is going to do it. And as the saying goes, while we're trying to figure it out, God's already worked it out. Mary's question to the angel was not an expression of doubt in comparison to the encounter with Zechariah, where his response was one of disbelief, which, as I mentioned, resulted in him being speechless until the fulfillment of the promised birth of John the Baptist. In verse, 30, in verse 35, the angel answered Mary and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So the angel was telling Mary that she would miraculously conceive a child by the power of the Holy Spirit and that the Son of God conceived by God was to enter into this world fully human because he was being born of a woman and we know that he was sinless in nature and I'm so glad that he selected Mary for this job because I don't know about you but if somebody told me and here I am at age 50 something <laughs> that I would conceive a child by the Holy Spirit I might be a little bit like Zechariah and say Nah, I'm good. <laughs> In verse 36, <laughs> Mary receives confirmation. The angel says, now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. The angel lets Mary know that God also performed a miracle in her cousin Elizabeth's life. Isn't that just like God? To provide confirmation and reassurance of what he can do by showing you an example of someone who he has already performed that miracle in their life? That is why it is so important that we share our stories. That is so, it's so important that we share our testimonies because there may be a sister today trying to figure out how she's going to make it only to hear somebody talk about how God answered right on time, how God provided right on time. And if my story has ever been uh, a testimony to anybody, I have two children who are now grown and I can remember being a young, divorced, single mom, trying to figure out how I was going to make it. And I'll tell you, it was his provision right on time, every time. And then he placed me in a family of faith that helped me to raise up my children in the way of the Lord so that I didn't have to worry about their spiritual condition as well. My son had men that he could look up to and that genuinely cared about them. So it is always a good thing to share your testimony. God took that season of my life and allows me to now witness to other young women who are trying to figure it out 
I can tell them God worked it out. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. Same God. If he did it before, he can do it again. Amen. So in verse 37, 